Call me in order. Uh, introduction of new board member. Yes, um, Mr. is on the end, and Tony was just appointed by the mayor and the common council um, at the last meeting of the common council, and so Tony's joining us. And maybe if you want to give just a little background, Tony, what you do and why you applied and so forth. Sure. Um, like I said, my name is Tony Durth. I work at UW Oshkosh in Student Recreation. I am the assistant director there. Uh, I am beginning my seventh year there in Oshkosh and living in Oshkosh. Originally from uh, eastern Iowa, actually. So I have, I'm married. I have two kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old. So um, that's kind of was a uh, motive to apply would, or for this position is just to, to try to better the parks and to leave a good uh, leave things better you know for the, for my kids when they get older um, I my uh, graduate degree was actually in recreation park and tourism administration so I've always been interested in this field and so I feel like working at the university um, being you know active in the community and using the parks I thought this was a neat opportunity so I'm excited to be here okay thank you welcome welcome, welcome. welcome. Uh, roll call Davis here Earth here. Ogaleski? Here. Herman? Here. Michelson? Here. Miller? Rule? Here. Schusler? Wooler? Here. Introduction of Ann Schaefer. We're introducing everybody here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? If you want to step up to the mic there, Ann. Um, oh, if you remember, last month I let you know that Ann um, was hired. Um, it's a combination position that we are funding through the parks senior center as well as our planning services division um, and as our marketing and fund development coordinator she'll be working um, taking on a lot of the fundraising grant writing obviously marketing um, not only with our department in the senior center but with the um, the planning division as they reach out to more of the neighborhood associations as this group is aware we work closely with a lot of those groups because they're centered around a lot of our parks so we thought it was a really good fit and um, Anne is seeing already a lot of potential cross marketing between all of the the different divisions and areas so and if you want to give some background for yourself that'd be great yeah hi how are you guys <coughs> so uh, I most recently was working at Marion University uh, in their advancement department as communications so I have a lot of experience with events um, promoting community activities so there's a ton of crossover uh, for years, I ran KFIZ and K107 out of uh, Fond du Lac, so there's a lot of uh, familiar faces that I'm meeting up with as Ray's taking me out and about. Uh, I feel I'm really familiar with the market, and I think there's such great opportunity to market what the city does with the parks, your Leech Amphitheater, to coordinate those marketing efforts with what the Convention and Visitors Bureau is doing. So I'm really excited. I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, forward progress made. Any questions? I know, I know you met with Wendy already at the CBB. I said yes. on the board, and she, she mentioned that she had met with you. So, yeah, they, they were so kind. So they had me uh, come to a staff meeting this morning. Okay, good. And already cross-promotion stuff is happening. For instance, the Friends of the Senior Center is going to put a food truck event on. And they have a military group coming in that night, and they had no place for them to go for dinner. And so now she's going to suggest they go to South Park and grab some of the food truck fare. So I think the idea is, is great, and it's, it's starting to work. You, you probably won't see Ann much at these meetings, but I wanted you to meet her. Um, she'll be working closely with Jenny, obviously, on the special event promotion, taking some of the fundraising off of Jenny's hands that she's doing, and let Jenny focus more on, on the events and running the, um, the program. So. Yeah, in fact, uh, this evening I'm going to head over to the Stevens Park um, open house to try to get to meet some of those folks. And just kind of as a council rep to this board, just to let you know, this was something that was in our strategic plan was to start promoting more of the city. Where can we promote, you know, in, in our parks, in our senior center? There's some discussion of a name change maybe there. 
there, you know, in, in our neighborhood associations. We want citizens, not only our citizens, to get involved in activities within the community, but drawing other people as the event city. And this is just another opportunity to cross cross over. And this was discussed at our, our um, long range planning in last year already. And uh, we were able to put a position in the budget. It took some time to get it filled, but um, council is very supportive of this and supportive of what's going on because we think this just enhances what we're already doing. And uh, we'd like to see some river walk functions going, you know, a partnership with the hotel, with the different restaurants up and down the river, uh, promoting um, the tourism, the historic tourism that the mayor's working on. That's something she'll be able to promote. And that, and it'll get people out to different uh, locations throughout the city. So we think it's a win win. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ann. Thank you. Okay. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Okay, approval of May 9th meeting minutes. Any additions or corrections or motion to accept? Make a motion to accept. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, there are no citizen statements. Park business discuss recommend amending section 19.4 of the City Oshkosh Municipal Code to allow domesticated animals city parks with restrictions. Um, yep, I'll kick this off. This is an item that I think has been on our back burner since back in uh, well, 2011 and 12 when we looked at our comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Um, I didn't bring that copy along, but I did take a look at it last week, and a couple of notes are made in there um, when the citizen survey was conducted as far as allowing dogs in parks, uh, more dog-friendly community. Uh, but I know that part of the Rettler study, uh, there's a specific phrase in there saying dogs in parks were a um, strongly suggested item during that time. It's something we haven't moved on um, for some time. We've had input um, from citizens all the way along saying, you know, obviously there's some that favor it, some that don't. Um, currently, as you probably know, people do take their dogs into the parks. The police um, patrol it. It's not high on their list, obviously. Um, but I can say I get a copy of every police report of anything going on in the parks. And just about every day or every other day, I do see animal complaint or animal issues. So they are out there. It's just not high on their priority list. <clears throat> um, you might have seen other communities, not only in our region, but across the state and the nation over the last five years have become more dog friendly. Um, I think the city of Fond du Lac is currently looking at um, possibly amending their ordinance. The city of Appleton, I know, has had some recent discussions. Um, we have some survey information um, from about a year ago that, that we looked at. But I think, you know, we, we kind of know that there's going to be probably 50% of the people against it, 50% for, and that may be representative of this board as well. Um, so we wanted to bring it forward because we do feel it's time we have to have this discussion. Um, wanted to give you at least what's currently in the ordinance, um, which was included in your packet. And just so that the citizens know out there, it's section 19-4, uh, section D, domesticated animals. Um, currently, domesticated animals are not allowed in parks except uh, for animals assisting disabled persons, um, essentially at the boat launches going from the vehicle to the boat, so basically through the parking lot area of the boat launches. Uh, the Roosh Sawyer Creek Park, which is over by Traeger School, they are allowed on that uh, property as, as long as they're on leashes. All these are stipulations that they must be on um, no longer than six foot leashes. Uh, they are allowed currently on the entire river walk, again, leashed um, and upon a waiver by the Common Council or granted by the Common Council. And then obviously we do uh, require that owners clean up and remove any waste deposited by their domesticated animals. So in taking a look at how other communities have been handling this and um, having some discussions with some of the individuals coming forth um, that are requesting us to look at allowing dogs, um, a number of communities, I, I looked at the um, ordinance that was approved up in Ashwaubenon, I believe, a couple of years ago. And what they do is essentially they restrict it to trails in the parks. Um, we can put um, restricted areas in here, which in our draft, um, and this draft changed a little bit since I sent it out in a packet. It's basically wording changes, but the, essentially we're saying we think it might be um, worth a try to allow animals, domesticated animals, on trails in the parks. Um, we would not allow those to be in city park buildings, playground areas, picnic shelter areas, uh, sport or athletic facility areas, the beach, zoo, pool, splash pad, golf course, or special event areas. Um, so you're looking at really restricting 
just down to the trail systems. Um, still allowing that people that do go to the boat launches, they're currently allowed to take their dog from the um, vehicle to the boat, Stim simply allowing that yet. So that's what we're looking at. Um, I have talked to the, uh, the police chief about his thoughts on this. He looked at the draft ordinance. He feels it's um, something that he would be able to help enforce. Again, he did tell us dogs in parks, they're not going to be out there telling people, you know, they're not going to be pushing high on their list to, uh, uh, for the dog issue, but obviously if they're out and about and they see that, uh, it would be something that would be dealt with. So I, I guess I wanted to kick off the discussion and find out how the board wanted to handle it um, and go from there, I guess. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I've been on the parks board for 20 years, and during, during that time, the issue of allowing dogs in city parks has been brought up either three or four times, and it's been turned down every time. Um, I think one of the main reasons why it's been turned down is public, the public safety for all parks, park users. Um, if, if dogs were allowed on trails and parks, there would be many dog and, pers and person conflicts. Um, to me, it comes down to simple math. Many of our trails in Menominee Park, for example, are, are only 10, 10 feet wide. You know, common trail standards today are 12 feet or even, you know, and, or even sometimes wider. Uh, sometimes, like if you have a, uh, like a city like Minneapolis, a uh, heavily used area, they actually have a, a, a walking and a walking trail in a, in, where dogs are allowed and they have bikes and rollerblades on another one. Um, I just don't think we have that accommodations to, to really make it a safe event. Uh, like I said, it comes down to the simple math. Many of our trails, such, such as Menominee Park, are 10 feet wide. Rough calculations would be two feet for, for the dog walker, six feet for the leash, two feet for the dog, that's 10 feet. For a biker, rollerblader, or pedestrian to pass a dog on the trail, there's no room. Uh, the 10 feet is fully consumed. Um, <clears throat> And remember that it's not a perfect scenario. It, like every time, it's not going to be a middle-aged adult walking a dog. If dogs were allowed on park trails, you'd see dogs walk by children, people wearing headphones, people on bicycles and rollerblades walking or running their dogs. And, and think of the issues associated with all those, those things. Uh, dogs, just kind of by nature, not all dogs, but many dogs do not like moving by bicycles. The road, I don't know if it's the rotating wheels or the motion or the sound or whatever it is, but many, ta many times dogs become aggressive in the presence of, of moving bicycles. Uh, past history has shown that there's a slim chance of a dog ordinance vi violations being acted on. History shows us that. By adding more dogs in the parks on trails, who will enforce the city ordinance? Last time we discussed this, I believe there was no history of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ray or Trish or anybody, there was no history of anyone getting a citation or a warning during the five-year period before that. Is that, I don't know if anybody can, but that, that's kind of what I recall. There was, there was none or there was no, no tickets, no citations and no warnings that, that, I, that, that I was aware of. And I don't know if you have any other. We could, we could have that pulled by the police department based on animal. And like I said, and I, I was, do get reports was of those. So. Back, so I, like I said, I, I yeah. don't know if, there's, if that's changed. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't know of any new data, Ray, do you? Not until I'd have them pull that information. Okay. I do not. Um, two, year, two years ago, I was in Menominee Park in the parking lot by the baseball diamonds and the boat launch. I saw a man walking a dog in the in a parking lot. The, the parking lot was almost entirely empty. He walked probably 30 feet from a police car, and the officer did nothing. He walked right by the car. Nothing happened. He just kept right on walking. Uh, you have you you can have all the city ordinances about dogs in par parks, but if nobody's going to enforce them, what good does it do? If there was a history of buy-in by the police or parks department to enforce present no dogs in the park ordinance it, it might be different the proposed ordinance is much more con this this proposed ordinance is much more complicated than the present one because there's multiple areas where dogs can and cannot be with no enforcement 
no history of enforcement, more dogs, more dogs, there'll be, there'll be more problems and, and this issue will get much, become much worse. Um, the other thing I think you have to remember is pedestrians and bicyclists, bicyclists and rollerblades have rights also. They should be able to use the trails without fear of safety and without having to stop or slow down while a dog owner gets their dog under control or even blocks the trail. Public safety is my number one concern and that's why I don't support dogs on the trails in the city parks. I feel as parks board members, we have an obligation to ensure the public safety of park users. I also feel we have an obligation to create a non-threatening park experience for all park users. Ray, um, <clears throat> we allow dogs on the river walk and out by uh, Traeger, as you mentioned. Have we had any incidences that you're aware of where there was either an accident because of a dog and a bike or any incident of a citizen uh, possibly being bit by a dog or anything? Do we have any documentation at all? I'm not aware of any severe incidents like that. Like I said, typically when I see a report come from the police department, it's more of them going out warning um, I don't know if they're giving a warning or a ticket. Again, that's information I'd have to have the police pull, but um, I am not aware of any dog and pedestrian issue. Well, I am one that did talk to Ray about this, bringing it forward to allow dogs on the trail, because I got several phone calls from citizens saying that we spent all this money to build these trails and now we can't even take, you know, we allow them on the sidewalks, all bikes on the sidewalks. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, people are concerned about, you know, people not picking up after their dogs well we have that ordinance and it's enforceable and I know that not everybody calls and complains when they don't pick up after their dog but well, let's, let's be honest there. we've got more goose poop in the parks yeah, and we, we, we know what to do with so I don't yeah. I don't think the dog poops gonna right. be an issue right I mean I mean th I think most not, probably better than 95 percent of citizens are responsible dog owners I agree that there could be an issue of not knowing if a bicyclist is coming up from behind them or something like that, but most cases where they're on a leash, um, under control of the owner, yes, younger kids can obviously walk dogs and get taken for a walk. Adults can do that too <laughs> by the dog. But I, I think, um, you know, it with the restrictions of where they can't be, which that was my concern, I think it, it's covering a lot. I think it's it's um, a good opportunity to move forward. Make it, I think this is a global issue. I, I think we're behind the times on these dogs in the parks. Um, there, there's going to be some conflicts. There's going to be some headaches. But, I mean, I don't know if everybody's been out to Terrell Island, you know, for a walk out there. I mean, everybody's got their dog. Everybody's walking. Everybody's playing. There's kids. There's dogs. There's bicycles. There's everything out there. And I, I think it's a wonderful experience. I think we need to get ahead of this. Um, I think we're way behind the times. Uh, I would agree with Steve from a, a standpoint that 95% of the people that I've talked with are, are fully supportive of this, um, and, and I, I just I, I just think we got to get current. Yes. Um, so, is there some way to like when we do the signage, if this would pass? Where I noticed on the Weawash Trail, like there's kind of a triangle where it says who needs to who needs to yield for who, like if a with a, a person with a dog needs to yield to a bicycle or something like that is that um, or am i thinking too far ahead or i think because the wheel wash is more of a, a multi-use trail versus <clears throat> our park trails are they're multi-use but they're not <clears throat> excuse me they're not similar to the county trails they're a little bit different in that they're more pedestrian um the signage i think is something we could look at down the road there's a cost to that obviously but I think it's more of once you get out into those multi-use trail areas that it becomes more of a signage issue and saying how do you respect that um, one thing we've talked about internally and and we're not disagreeing um, with anybody on either side because we're more neutral on this we're willing to give it a try but I think we can do certain things in our department as far as educating um, the public what Chad and I had talked about is maybe we come up with a, a quarter page of information with the new ordinance and if our guys are out there we don't have the um, the power in the ordinance to um, ticket or cite people but we can definitely educate them if we see if our guys are on mowing they see somebody with a dog near the playground give them the information saying we just changed the ordinance they're allowed on paths here are the you know the restrictions so please abide by them and if we don't get that compliance then we can have our staff contact the police I think it's more of um, more of a courtesy to get out there and and educate the people a little bit and we can help do that in some way so when they register oh, dogs, oh. they get a pamphlet right away mm -hmm. 
Bill? Um, can I, I'm Oops. sorry, I had kind of a follow-up to that. I just was asking that because I wanted to share my experience from just, um, I ride my bike like three or four times on the Weawash Trail for the last like four or five years. And there's dogs and there's toddlers and strollers and things like that. And while sometimes they make me a little nervous, I got to say 99% of the time, I mean, people will literally stop and, and wait with their dog while I go by. I probably have more problem with people with strollers and not paying attention, <laughs> you know, when you're going by. So, I mean, I, I guess I was wondering if, I mean, have those people just, because I don't see it as a problem, at least from my experience from the Weawash Trail, I, I, I would assume that it might be the same unless maybe there was education there. That's why seen to see any problems it might be something we could take a look at at least from an omni park because it's more of it's closer to a multi-use trail similar to the county um, so maybe some types of signs on there periodically might be a, a good idea as well but you know other parks such as Stevens Park as a through trail basically people at this point would be allowed to walk in there some things like that we're not going to look at putting signage up because it's not as heavily traveled as Menominee Park might be so it's it's something we could take a look at Bill what parks are being would be affected by this yep i actually went through our whole list <clears throat> and i'll run through that for you i'll go through the yeses at this point um, and these are just again trails that have or parks that have trails through them um, roll park which is downtown by the y has essentially a through trail garden club if everybody familiar with the little garden club triangle it's pretty much a sidewalk going through there um, stevens park and we can get this out. Chris, Trish can put it in the, the minutes bill, so if you can take okay. notes. But um, Tech Miller Park, yep. Menominee Park, yep. South Park, yep. Riverside Park, or essentially the Riverwalk, which already is, is allowed, but Riverside Park we would include. Um, both Carl and William Steiger Parks, uh, the Glatz Nature Trail, North High Conservancy, and Sawyer Creek Roosh Park already is allows those. Um, so I'll go through the no's, and these are, um, I think when I looked at it, there essentially there's about a dozen parks that would allow dogs in the parks, and about 15 to 20 that would be no. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, I was so wondering how many would be. Yep, about a dozen. <clears throat> Ray, because I think there's, I think there's concerns on both sides of the table. Would it be appropriate to do like a two-year trial of this and then let's take a look at this after two years similar what we've done to other things that have been a little controversial i mean i that's, think that's what i was gonna say yeah. uh, <clears throat> i've been on here as long as everybody too and we've gone through this for years and years and years and i think with Roosh and these other ones they came to us for the walking and dogs on that right mm -hmm. And we said at that time, well, we'll give it a try and see what's happened. Now, I haven't seen any problems. I haven't, I haven't not that I go there, I haven't heard any problems. I haven't, uh, with anybody at Rouge, I haven't heard any problems, anybody on where we can walk dogs. And I think we probably should at least give it a try. And my idea was the same thing. I think we should do it and uh, at least give it a two-year trial and see if it works. And if it works, fine. And uh, and Roosh, I thought we were given, and we probably went by that time limit already, too. I thought we, didn't we have some, and I could be wrong, but didn't we put a time limit on that, too, we were going to give I, it a We'd have to go back and look. That was before but anyway, time. But anyway, we haven't had any problems, so why go back, hash it over again? Mm -hmm. But my idea was that I think we should uh, put it in and at least give it a try. I mean, why? Why sit here and think of things that could happen when we don't know that? That, like your experiences, you haven't had any problems riding a bike. People stop. I mean, sure, there's going to be people out there that aren't courteous or whatever, but that's going to happen anytime. I think we should put it. In, I think we should put it in at least on a trial basis, Bill. I agree that the trial base, but then we do it with an ordinance. If, we're gonna, if you're going to put a new ordinance oh. in, and you only put it in for two years. Yes, you can do that. We did that with a, another ordinance. Um, any, actually, any ordinance can be recalled after it goes into effect, but the committees <coughs> can put a 
like a sunshine clause that after two years okay. it will come back to the board for discussion and if at that time they want to change the ordinance they have the right to do that if and then council can make it. well if we put something in i bet they could put an ordinance in and if we're having problems with it, it can we can bring it back it. and take it out anyway. examples of stop and well, the problem. lights on Main Street Main Main Church, Main America. You're right. That that woman went later, right in front of me tonight, and the big red lights up there, and this one's over here, and she just turned. Yeah, we changed that within a year because the problems just reexisted. So yeah, it. We've done that before. Other other committees have put you know that, and it can be written right into the resolution to the council that the Parks Board will revisit this in two years and make a recommendation back to council if need be. Well, then I guess I'd right like to make it. a motion that we... I, I guess just on that topic, I'd leave out the sunset clause because otherwise in two years we'd have to go back through and change the ordinance again. Just mm -hmm. let's get it in the okay. minutes that will... If you, even after a year, because right. this is going to take two meetings at the council because it'll have to have two readings. Okay. So it's not going to be in place until late July, early August potentially. So I would say give us till the end of 2017. We can come back and, and I'll put it in my calendar that we give you a report and, and this board will report all the way along just like we have on other issues so but i would keep it out of the ordinance and just say then we don't have to go back and do it but just so we know you can always change the ordinance right so Correct. yeah i agree so then i'd like to make a motion that we adopt this under a two-year trial period I second. but the ordinance won't read that way right <clears throat> The ordinance, the ordinance itself won't, but I mean. The ordinance itself right. won't, no. Right. Keep it out of the ordinance. Right. Minutes minutes will. Will. Correct. Okay. I would prefer that. Then we don't have to change the ordinance and, and, into sunset. And, and I agree with that 100%. So. so when you say two years, are we saying at the end of 2017, assuming it goes in half of this year? <coughs> I would say two, two years from when it's in, two years from when it's actually passed. Like August also. of 2018. Okay. August of 2018. Yep. Two years from adoption? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's appropriate. <coughs> Call roll. Davis? Aye. Darth? Aye. Gogoleski? Aye. Herman? Aye. Michelson? Me. Miller? Aye. Roll? Aye. Muller? Aye. And I encourage all the board members here, if you're out and about, um, I know each of you has some aspect, biking, biking, walking, softball, other athletic things, and just being out on the, you know, everybody's out there. So if you do start seeing issues, we need to make sure and bring it back, let people know on TV that, you know, we have this as a trial, so let's let's make sure that it's successful if you want it to continue. And we'll try to do some education through our staff as well, um, if it does get approved. Okay. Uh, Park director's report. I've got to step out for another meeting, so thank you. Thanks. Um, pretty brief, but uh, if you have been over by uh, the senior center, either Stagger Park, you'll see that the uh, the parking lot at the senior center is coming along well. Um, we had a status update today. They're, they were on schedule, but now with the recent rains, they're a little bit behind, but it looks like uh, that project's progressing well. It includes the replacement of the trail in um, William Steiger from essentially Wisconsin Avenue Bridge back to the Senior Center. Um, you'll know that it's been removed already. Once they start paving the parking lot, they'll do the paving of the park, or the, uh, the park path. Um, if you also recall, we had the agreement with UW Oshkosh Foundation from a couple years back um, that required the foundation and UW to replace uh, the Carl Steiger path that essentially goes from the new concrete by Wisconsin Street Bridge back towards the, uh, the Wellness Center. Uh, I have worked with the UW Oshkosh and our contractor for the project at the Senior Center, and we're going to also have that trail uh, repaired, removed and repaired um, again as part of this project, so you'll see both portions of the trail completed. Um, I think Trish handed out a reminder for you about the the opening ceremony or um, opening celebration for the Boatworks Park area. If you haven't been down there, the um, accessible kayak canoe launch um, has been working very well. We've talked to a couple people that have used it. They said it's great. It's very, very nice to get in and out of. Um, we're going to have a little ceremony um, this Thursday from 4 until 6 down at the site. Hopefully if the public is out, it's a public free event. Come on out. There's going to be some live music as well as um, probably some refreshments. Um, and we're hoping that people will come down before the first Waterfest show. So feel free to stop down and, and take a look at that. 
Um, other items that we are starting into, it's starting to be budget time for us, uh, starting the initial conversations on our operating budget. We had our staff meeting today with uh, City Manager Roloff and the Finance Department on our capital improvement plan, showed them this board's prioritized project list from back in May. Um, so the CIP is beginning and our operating budgets are probably going to be due the first part of August. So um, things will start rolling on that. Um, also, as part of that, we need to have all of our performance evaluations done by the end of July as well. So it's um, not only busy time for events, but also administratively for us to get through all of those items. I know Chad and, and Jenny will have a lot more updates on events and projects. So, Okay. Chad. Uh, <clears throat> I'll try and be brief, too, with just a lot of things happening. Uh, of course, we're in the heart of the season uh, already uh, for early June. Um, last week, our Pollock Community Water Park did open. Um, uh, things are going rel relatively well up there operationally for us, so that's a good part uh, as far as the mechanical ends. Having uh, some challenges with the with the guarding right now, and I think it's overall on the staff perspective that uh, both Jenny and I have experienced with our 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 areas of of recruiting people to work this year. It's been very challenging, and uh, some choose not to work uh, when they're here so they might not be long so it, it's been a challenging effort from that end but uh, overall I say with the staffs that we do have uh, they're definitely taking the bull by the horns and working well where they're at with all of our our entities with our athletic fields uh, uh, concession facilities that we have um, elite amphitheater with our first large event last weekend with Irish Fest uh, that's got a very busy summer plan there between June July and August between everything happening there with the different events uh, pretty intense schedule uh, definitely requires a lot of maintenance in, in and around the other things. Um, and the turf end, uh, park ends in general, I think our crew has been doing very well of getting maintained in the grass and the uh, areas that we have out there, but it's just been a struggle over the past couple of weeks until everybody gets uh, adapted to their new roles and working and the familiarities uh, with the buildings and grounds and the different facilities. But um, on a project update, I think if you might have heard even with the art fair this past weekend down over on the news, I was ecstatic to hear the comments uh, from the users about the restroom at South Park. Uh, I thought that was neat to hear uh, of the success of that facility. Uh, Red Arrow Park, we've actually started the construction there with the renovation uh, of that facility going forward where uh, Capelli uh, Diedrich is doing uh, the work. Uh, I would hope by the end of July, if not early August, that that facility is up and running. Um, from that end. In regards to a zoo operations, um, if you might have seen a couple things, we've had a, a couple issues with some of the domestic animals that have come in and exotics this year. Uh, we had to swap out uh, the um, uh, kangaroos that we had there and we now have two red fox there. The one was not adapting well to uh, some of the what do you want to say, the surprises, whether it be public machinery, things of that nature would really get very tense in the exhibit. So we thought it would be best to remove them off, uh, went there. We actually lost uh, um, a sheep uh, down there as well. Uh, so we have two young lambs that are still there developing well. Uh, we've worked with the uh, Crystal Ray Ranch of this year uh, for a different vendor for our domestic animals. It's been a good agreement working with it, but it seems like there's always challenges uh, when animals get cha transferred to and from and getting used to no new environments. Uh, there's no foul play by no means. Everything that uh, where we have had uh, deaths, uh, we've performed necropsies and they've been for natural uh, occurrences. So that things just happen. But uh, um, been a good good year so far with the zoo. I hope it keeps going from that end. So um, I don't think I have anything else right now. I probably do, but any questions or concerns you might have or I can ask. Bill. Can you give us an update on our uh, foliage along the shore at uh... Miller's Bay? Yeah. Um, actually, I don't know if you want to highlight that because you had more recent conversations than I did, Ray. That'd probably be yeah, we just actually over the weekend I got an email from the group um, that was out there and if you take a look behind the Melvin Avenue pump station, it really looks nice. I don't know if you've been over there, but it's just completely yellow flowers right now and just look, nice. look, look really nice. I was out there I think last week we took a walk out on Ames Point to look at an issue and I thought on the north end everything was very low. I didn't see anything probably taller than three and a half feet. Um, from what I saw was um, nothing near the five to six that they've had in the past. I thought it looked fairly well trimmed down. Mm -hmm. I've got a tendency to disagree with you on that right now. I do too. Well, I, then I guess we need to know about that um, because when we're out there, it, it seemed to look good, and we were just out there within the last two weeks. I went, so. out, I went out there last week too, and he showed me the pictures, and I thought it was uh, 
about the size of that sign or that board that they got there. Now, if there's a f there, there, he said there's a few. Right. <coughs> you know, I, if they're going to have a few in there. I can see if they go in and take the few big ones out. Yep. And if but to, from what I saw, and I rode out there, and it was about a week ago. Uh, it it could have the big ones could have grown since then, but I thought it was a lot better than last a lot better than it was, put it that way. But it's still not what we they agreed to do. Right. It's at well the at three, three foot, foot level. Right. Yeah. It's it's at four foot. Well, I didn't go measure it, but I thought it was fairly decent. But well, when I drove by there was there was one sitting up there with a big ball and it had to be six foot. Yeah, I was, it, I, that I didn't see because I didn't see any the, of that. You're driving down a road that's on the would be the east side, west side. We can have Bill look at. I know Bill's been working with the group pretty closely. And if there's some additional, they've been out there pretty regularly. And if there's some stuff that's gotten that tall, then we can address it with them. But <clears throat> to be honest, I thought What's it looked pretty ring? nice. Quite a bit of it has got. Yeah, there's. <clears throat> yeah, there's. I was just out there today. I, I took a few photos. I mean, some of them. Yeah, they're they're probably between two and a half and three and a half feet. It's pretty common, and some are. There's a number of them that are three and a half feet. There's a few that are even over four feet. You know, a few select ones. So, they, I guess, you know, they have they have to keep keep it under control. But have you talked to the group at all? I know Bill is Bill is pretty much in contact, and I didn't have him to be there tonight. So, because I, I you know, I don't know. If, did we get another update on the from the shore, the restoration the shoreline restoration committee? Um, is it the draft that we got last year? It said uh, late April, early May, uh, they were going to remove 100 to 200 of the tallest plant species from the existing bed at the base of Ames Point, install some of the new installation bed. And they were going to thin, thin out 75 monorata plants, and and then they were going to replace about 50 uh, replace about 50 percent of removed plants with lower growth species. And it just goes on and on. And then it said. Uh, so did they? Do we know if they did any of that? Because it sure doesn't look like they did. But I mean, it's possible. But I go by there every day on my bike. But I'll have to follow up with Bill. I know last year they did remove a number of the taller plants, and they moved them down to the the pump station site. Um, but I'll have to follow up with Bill on it and see, because um, he was working on um, the final agreement or the the maintenance plan, basically. So. Yeah, I mean, and then it says, that, you know, the next part of the, this plan was late June 2016 clip off taller plantings missed <clears throat> or that were reseeded, um, remove garbage and maintain trail. But, you know, the thing to me is if, you know, if they're going to do that, you know, this stuff grows. That's big time, especially like right now. If, if you, you know, if you want to keep it three feet, you're going to be probably trimming it to like two and a half just because it's going to grow to three before you know by the time you turn your back, you know, it's... You just it's just gonna be a big maintenance thing you know trying to keep trying to keep that height you know it's, it's gonna be hard can you get us a report back Ray next meeting yep I'll have Bill here. did you get that email Ray from Michelle Vogden Mutzel the chair Is the picture of the the flowers well down? no oh. they she sent an update to at least the council members I don't know who was all part of that I haven't seen anything recently so she no. um, said that they had uh, a plant sale on 528 and 64 they had a work day June 18th from 8 to noon and... 18th? Oh, that's coming up. Yep, that's coming up. And they just said they've uh, had a work day on Sunday, May 29th, was very productive. They installed a new trail through the site, clean up the main wood chip trail, lay the remaining wood chips on trail in our new viewing area. They removed weeds, woody growth, and removed about 50 tall plant species. This was in an email that got sent to us. So maybe after their their cleanup day coming must be this weekend then yeah. the 18th. So, yeah. so we'll we'll touch base with them and, and check it out I after this see. this cleanup. Yeah. Yep. But I'll I'll get that, Steve. I don't know if she sent it, copied me or Bill on it. So okay. Yeah, I just I got it last week. Okay. Yeah, I discussed that draft that they sent us with you know what they said they were going to do. Well, and that draft is what they presented. We, I had Bill take us perspective from our department saying this is what we're going to require. So even though you've got that old draft, I'll have to see what Bill ultimately yeah, what's, changed. Yeah, like I said, to. I haven't gotten any, yep. anything since then, so I'm, I'm just taking this as what we've yep. got. You know? I'll check with them, and we can have them here next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay, is that it? 
I, I think the one last thing I'll add is if you get a chance to walk out towards the end, end of Ames Point, uh, we worked with the street department on doing a little shoring out there in some hazard areas. Uh, also uh, lifted uh, the Ames Point monument at the end and brought that up and did some shoring around the backside of that. If you can take a look for it right now, it, it, it turned out very nice uh, for the short term. And it, that's something, Chad, I'm glad you said it's short term um, because with the ice shelves out there that some of the rock obviously is, uh, gets removed and it's eaten away at the trail. So we're going to have to take a long, it's going to be a costly fix to try to keep that um, going. So we'll have to look at some possible grant opportunities. And um, But there are some areas that need some addressing out there. But yeah. hopefully this will get us a lot some of reprieve. There's a lot of the ice and yeah. the ice shelves. So. As long as you give me reports, so I do want to say that I was at Irish Fest on Saturday. I thought that the, the uh, tie-ups down at the leach looked very nice and they're very easy to tie to. The cleats are right there and very well marked because I was in the river. <laughs> the image could tie up to anything but those. Literally in so, the river? Well, I was in a boat in the river. Okay. <laughs> but I thought, I thought it, it's, it's a very good um, option. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that the boat club's going to help purchase some more. Yep. I Thanks for bringing it up, Steve. I, I didn't have it on my note. Um, take a look at it down at Leach. I did have pictures on my phone, and I just didn't have a chance to get them on the screen for you. But essentially what we did was um, we worked with WPS to try to come up with a solution. As we had informed you last um, last month, they don't want people tying up to the um, the seawall so that it was be, would not be compromised. We have some sand-filled barriers that weigh in excess of 2,500 pounds each. We were able to fill those with sand, put boat cleats on, and then we put signage saying boats must tie here to these cleats below. <clears throat> and those are about 76 inches long, and we spaced them about 25 feet. <clears throat> we um, installed those last week, and we had somebody from the boat club with one of the large 30-some foot boats come over. We worked closely with them, um, tied his boat up, and he said, these are going to work awesome for us. Um, so WPS has... Um, committed $2,500 to help us fund this project. Uh, the boat club we have had discussions with, they're going to be um, having a board meeting at the end of this month. They're looking to uh, provide some funding, and then we're going to be using some funding from our department. We have five currently. Um, looking at the entire length that we want to have these, we need to order about seven more. Um, so that's these five cost us about $1,900, um, not including our sand and other materials that our staff does. So um, another seven, we're probably looking at about twenty-three to $2,500. Um, but I think it is a good alternative. Um, the boaters are happy. Um, it's just currently it's um, just going to be a smaller area they can tie to until we get more of the, um, the barricades in there. So worked out pretty well. well Steve Dobish wants to get rid of the, the sand <laughs> traps. Of course, they just want the sand. We'd have to read Vinny. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, so as Chad has said, we're kind of um, now open full time everywhere in the last couple weeks here. So June first, we open full time at the Children's Amusement Center. Um, so that is in full swing now. Uh, the zoo is also open full time, and then the pool just opened full time as of Thursday the ninth. So we're open every day now. Um, if the weather will warm up, not like today, but. Um, it's been a very, very busy year already, and I'm, I'm hopeful it'll be a good year, but we have a lot of really new people this year. So we have two brand new managers at the water park. Um, both, both of them have been in the system somewhere in the past. Um, so they're great, great workers, great kids, but um, they're first year as managers at the pool. So um, a lot of learning over there, a lot of training, a lot of hours spent. Um, we also have two brand new managers at Menominee Park. Again, they've been somewhere in the system, so they kind of know things. Um, two great girls, but very new to that position as well. Um, we also have a new leech manager this year. And I don't know if Chad shared last month, but we have a new zoo educator that's being paid for through the Zoological Society. Um, so she's been very busy as well, um, planning different kind of educational things in the zoo, you know, in the afternoons for, for kids and families and things. Um, you know, if school groups come in, she can do tours with them or she can do demonstrations with some of our indoor smaller educational animals. Um, she's been doing some scavenger hunt things, some different games. So that's a great thing for us to, um, you know, for the zoo itself, and, and then it's being paid for the Zoological Society. So just offering more, more people, more things to do in the zoo, which is, which is great. Um, it's something we've been asked about a lot in the past, like, well, if I come there on a field trip, can we do this or this? And we just didn't have anybody. So now we do have her, so that is a wonderful addition to the zoo. Um, so we've just been, you know, the last couple weeks here, the last two weeks really trying to get things, um, you know, get everybody trained and learning and knowing what to do and when. So it's been it's been an interesting couple of weeks, but I'm hopeful for a good a good season. So 
Um, coming up here real soon, we have uh, this next week, we have our first event at the pool, Welcome Summer Celebration, um, which we again have the $3,000 sponsorship from um, Winnebago Community Credit Union. So they are again the major sponsor of all events at the pool this summer. So those are all sponsored by them. So that's great. Um, we also on the 18th have our um, first snooze the zoo of the season coming up so that's the overnight in the zoo sleepover um, which we're you know doing really well on so um, we're excited about that that one is also fully sponsored um, before the event starts by kind of multiple smaller sponsors that covered all the expenses for that one um, so again no expenses over that um, the 24th of June is our first movie night at the leech that one's being sponsored by Cellcom down there um, so we'll have that and then the 28th we have a, a mascot day at the Children's Amusement Center um, which is the day we have a lot of the local mascots come in and they you know do photo ops with the kids and different things and the kids love it um, last year it was a lot of fun so but a very very busy month so just trying to get that all on the calendar um, and things and then the June or July 12th we've been trying to get that out there starts our six-week concert series so if you haven't seen the lineup you know check it out online um, on the website but I'm excited we have a good lineup this year um, so the more we can promote that and get that out the more it'll help get people down there on Tuesday nights so that's really coming um, right around the corner with all kinds of other events in June is, or in July as well so um, I think that's it for now unless anybody has any questions That's it. That's it, I think. For That's now. the shortest report you ever had. <laughs> no. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> okay, I think that is about it. Speaking Next meeting is July 11th. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Say All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> 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 Thank you. Oh, yeah, we, don't. <laughs> we don't want these four hour marathons.